Well, I did a little work, not too much. I'm working on something else at the moment. I'm trying to see if I can create a new inductor with a split winding such that it's counterwound um, on one half versus the other with a, s uh, with a center tap in the middle, something that Donald Smith uh, talked about. But I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> it's taking a little bit of uh, time to monkey with the Paul Falstad simulator to see if I can successfully do that. In the meantime, I did something far simpler. I took one look at this and I thought to myself, you know, this looks like a uh, center uh, transformer with a center tap. And Paul Falstad gives us that extra component. Um, under passive components, we have transformer or we have tapped transformer. So what I did was I made a variation on this circuit in which I took out the two transformers, put in a center tap transformer, and it works perfectly fine. It works just as good as the other one. So let's start up this. And it um, slowly rises in the negative direction. I also consolidated my two scopes for the inductor because something interesting happens when you consolidate them. Um, you get to see that they are 90 degrees out of phase, and that's something I hadn't noticed before. And then I realized, well, of course, they should be because I put in capacitors, and capacitors have a tendency of doing that. Without the capacitors, that probably won't happen. So let's see what happens if I take out the capacitors. Take out that one. Take out that one. Stretch this to make it connect. This I'll have to get a piece of wire. And restart it up. And now immediately Oh, I lose everything. How interesting. <laughs> okay, let's see if it uh Yep. Hmm. This is interesting. Oh. Oh, because this is totally different. Yeah. Without the capacitors serving as a second source of energy, uh, this circuit won't work because I did a number of changes to the original circuit that's on this website. I took out the AC source over here, uh, or actually it was over here, between the lamp and the load, and then I added the load and I disconnected the lamp from a tie down here and added, you know, these two references, the grounding reference and the aerial reference. So without the um, without the AC source over here, which is what <laughs> normally mag amps are supplied with, the thing won't work. But the capacitors work just fine as a substitute for an AC source once they get charged up to any degree. Um, see, this will, is giving us some volts, but if we take away the voltage, we find we have next to zero amps and they're quickly it went down to well it's going up and down now it's in the negative on second thought the amps are climbing in the negative direction very gradual I suppose eventually it'll get back some of its strength but we won't have well what would happen if I open this now yeah, I don't see any waves. Huh. Ooh, even got an RMS? You know, it might work without them, just not as robust. Anyway, be that as it may. So I did um, an analog with this, and now let's see how this works. And again, we get some pretty good results. And again we get the waves 90 degrees out of phase the amplitude the vo it's leading the voltage is leading by 90 degrees um and that's typical you know so it doesn't surprise me but um it does now because i failed to m and it's the same kilocycles 220 some odd odd kilocycles so it did surprise me because i forgot to do something like that so consequently, I put in this symbol, the theta symbol, in the title, because then I realized, you know, the theta means, whoops, that there's a 90 degrees phase relation between the amperage and the voltage. Um, 
and had I not combined the two amperage and voltage tracings into one, I wouldn't have noticed. Uh, this doesn't tell me a whole lot. This just tells me it's AC pretty much. And it's squashed like this um, because of the shape of the scope. That's the only reason why it's squashed. Otherwise, it would be a perfect circle. But it's elliptical because the amperage axis, the vertical, is shorter than the distance of the voltage axis, the horizontal. So it comes out squashed as a, an ellipse. Anywho, it's the same circuit. It behaves exactly the same. It's just you're using one center tap transformer as opposed to two regular transformers with um, slightly different wiring to be the exact duplicate of this. Um, and that's interesting, you know. It's, you know, not a whole lot of deviation, but depending on which parts you have available to put this thing together, you have your choices. Um, otherwise, there might be a slight difference in how they behave, but I haven't noticed um, offhand. I haven't really tested it a whole lot. I just kind of give it a cursory look, and I go, hmm, pretty good. <laughs> and I leave it at that. So I thought I'd let you know. And then it's got its own link. So CTT means uh, center tap transformer. And I've got it in CMF as well. So um, if we kill that, um, and then we come down here. Here's the Java version. And we start it up. And wait a little bit. And then invoke the coil. And I didn't wait long enough. The amplitude doesn't really show itself very well. <laughs> there we go. It's pretty. Huh? Um. There it goes. Took a little while to accumulate power. So I just didn't go far enough. there. So the voltage is leading by 90 degrees the amplitude. The yellow is amplitude and the voltage is green. See? So it does work. You just <laughs> have to be a little patient. Um, and then you can alternately start building back up again if it's not enough. I don't know how to drain the thing to go back down to zero other than hitting the reset button, you know. <laughs> don't know everything. You know, I just do basics just to get the concept across. So there's this reestablishment at a higher amplitude. Um, so now what I want to do, let's look at the power consumption, the watts. What kind of waveform is that? So we got a sine wave, and it's kilowatts, 28 kilowatts. So if we go back to um, this, we see it's 28 kilovolts, is it? Hmm, for some reason, there's no negative value. I wonder why that is. Oh, I never put it in. I didn't save it. Darn it. Well, I'll have to change that. So it's 284 kilovolts. And then we take away the voltage. And it's a mere 200 milliamps. So that's why it's the uh, power consumption is very low. Oh, I see. Every time you change, you lose your negative for some reason. So it's 28 kilowatts, which is about half of what my car puts out. But my car runs at a higher amperage than this. So unless you can find a motor that can accommodate, um, an AC motor that can accommodate such low uh, voltage, or excuse me, such low amperage and such high voltage to get equivalent results, um, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I don't know much about motors. But it would be an AC motor for sure when you're coasting. When you're escalating the power supply, uh, the motor would probably have to be disengaged so that it doesn't lock up unless it continues to turn. Uh, I don't know if it'll be capable of doing that when it's surging. You know, when you go back to surge mode, um, I'm not, you know, I don't know anything pretty much about AC motors, so I don't know when it's in this surge stage, uh, will it continue to revolve around its drive shaft axis, so I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd show this off, and, um, oh, see, the lamp is lighting up to let you know you've got lots of power. So, thank you for watching.